45, I'm standing on base, holding the razor, using the tip of the razor, I'm gonna go about three inches on the surface of that layer, down to one inch at the nape of the neck. Just a point uh, above the point of the logo here is our destination, and we're gonna move forward with taking a diagonal forward section. That diagonal forward section is gonna stay very, very similar to the previous section, but what we are gonna do on this one is just slightly over direct it to the backside of its own section. So taking that out of the 90 once again, dropping that back down to a 45, starting with the tip of our razor and working that down to the nape of the neck. As you can see with the model back behind me here, we have an end result that is a bob. So this is gonna be our undercut. It's not necessarily highly visible, but it gives it that much more character. It also diffuses a lot of weight underneath the actual uh, occipital bone itself. And uh, just looks cool. I'd say probably more than anything. So continuing to find my 90 at the occipital bone, dropping that down to a 45. I'm gonna slightly over direct this section back to the backside of its own section. Using the previous section as a guide to length, we are traveling to the back recession at the back of the ear, nearing the mastoid process at this point in time. I'm gonna continue in these same sections. I'm gonna drop that back down again. Finishing up this left side, the only thing that I'm gonna change on this left side is, is this last section right behind the ear. I'm gonna over direct this back to the previous section. Everything up until this point has been me just taking it to the back side of its own section. So just traveling about another quarter of an inch further, which is just developing a little bit more weight, and if anything, just a little bit more security behind the back of the ear, so I know that I'm not gonna cut that area too short. I can always come back in and diffuse more weight from it and flatten it even more if I need to. Hey guys, if I'm talking serious business right now and you're totally in, give me a thumbs up right now. I'd love to know who's in the house right now. My name's Travis Parker. I've got an IG takeover with Hairbrain right now, and we're gonna bring the dopest haircut I'm doing right now, right now. So. If you're with me, give me a thumbs up right now. I see people from all over the world right now. This is epic. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is that last section that I was talking about. And like we said, we're gonna take it from the O-bone, drop that to a 45, and then over direct this one just a slight bit further back. Now, what I want you to take into account is body positioning. I'm standing with the center of the section in the center of my body. With that said, on the left side, the occipital bone is at the center of my chest. I love layers and graduation so much that that point right there needs to be right here for me. Now, on the right side, things are gonna shift gears ever so slightly. For a sense of ergonomics and body position, I'm gonna drop my mannequin down a little bit. So otherwise, I'm gonna lower the chair down where my model is. From there, I'm gonna take it and I'm twisted backwards here. Let's get this handle to the right side. There we go. I'm going to ask my model to lean her ear towards her shoulder on the opposite side that I'm actually working on. Leaning over to the shoulder and I'm going to have her slightly lean forward. Now, what you're going to see is as soon as I put my, my fingers down, my palm towards chest, my hand naturally has a pitch and an angle to it. That is going to be the diagonal forward lines that we're working on this side. That helps me find symmetry and continuity when I'm building graduation. So for what it's worth, it's a great best practice. And if you guys are with me, throw me some hearts right now and tell me that you are jamming with me on this haircut right now. Yeah. We got Rio in the house right now. That is dope. Once again, guys, this is an IG takeover on Hair Brain, and we are building a textured bob. My name is Travis Parker, and I'm from the Travis Parker Academy. And we have a curriculum called Hairdressing Made Easy. We are getting ready to launch this online in about three months from now. We are also taking our webinars live and online. So if you like the vibe right now, we got a lot of this coming at you easily within the next eight weeks. So stay tuned with us. We're working things out on Clubhouse as well. <clears throat> and on Clubhouse, we're doing chat rooms called Hairdressing Made Easy on Mondays and Wednesdays. And it really is about us. It's about us trying to simplify the process so we can find a little bit more uh, comfort behind the chair. And if anything, just focus on the interpersonal relationships that we're developing with our clients. Taking this out to 90 again, at the occipital bone, the surface of that section right now is parallel to the ground. We're gonna drop that to a 45, just over directing slightly, as I mentioned, to the back side of its own section. And here is that section that I was talking about before on the previous side, that we're gonna over direct it back to the previous section just with a little bit more length in mind and security with this so that we don't overcut that area. 
We're gonna drop that in using the tip of my shear. I'm just gonna refine that little point. And we've got our stack and our graduation starting to build. So if you guys are with me right now on this base or on this uh, undercut right now, give me some thumbs up and some hearts and let me know that you're in the house and you're enjoying the haircut right now. Let's see, I, I got, I'm so blind, I gotta get up closer. I love your art, thank you so much. That's so dope. Yeah, that's my collage wall. If you guys, uh, in front of the collage wall, obviously I've got head forms back here. I'm gonna be following the mapping of these head forms throughout the entire cut. So where we're at right now is we're in this first part of the process. Let me move this just slightly over here. We're in the first part of the process over here, which is showing the lines and graduation in this section and the stacking that we're doing at a 45. This is gonna be covered. This is underneath our haircut. So if you can see, here's our end result, guys. This is what we're about to build right now. But where we're at is underneath in this section down below the occipital bone. There we go. So we got some good texture in here. So excited. We got a couple steps in this haircut, but none of them are too complicated. And the really rad thing about it all is that it's a textured haircut. It's supposed to have elements of imperfection. So we're gonna follow best practices. So we have symmetry within the haircut. We have balance in the haircut. And we have sustainability in the haircut. So it lasts our client a good two to three to four months. But at the same time, we're really implementing things loosely. We're, we're looking for air, we're looking for movement. We're really trying to push natural texture in the haircut all in all. It's not necessarily the haircut I'm looking to bone dry straight or blow dry straight in like a bone straight manner. But again, I'm looking for that push, that shove and that imperfection and that's what makes it cool. We're going to continue to proceed into the baseline of the haircut now. This is going to be the longest hanging area of the haircut. And what we're going to create is a concave line in that. The front will be slightly longer than the back, but not dramatically. I'm also going to take this line square to the head form itself. So in essence, as I drop this down, what you'll see is the sides here are going to have a slight bit of over direction. I'm going to stand at the center profile of the back of the head and again, as I comb this to me, and I turn my fingers and my knuckles parallel to me or to the wall in front of me, what I start to see is that there is slight over direction happening here. And that's what's gonna start to carry that length in front of the back of the ear to the front of the shoulders, which is such a simple, straightforward technique and excellent for creating that concave or again, that A-line concept in a haircut. So let's turn our girl just a little bit more towards us. There we go, if I can only get it straight. Perfect, we're cool. If you guys are with me, let's see some love. What do we got in there? Nice. Go me some hearts, throw me some hearts. Tell me where you're from, people. I'd love to see who we're talking to right now. It's 1 p.m. in San Diego, California, which is where I'm based right now, but where do you live? Some quality education right there. Thanks, G-Money. Yes, we see some stuff blowing up right now. All right, keeping the hair rather wet right now. Half of this cut is gonna be done on wet hair and the second half of this cut's gonna be done on dry hair. And then we're gonna do a little bit of detailing on the back end of that as well. But part of the construction is wet and I'm looking for refining my sections right now. I'm also looking for something to create a buffer and a lubricant for my razor as well. So I'm not just scratching up the cuticle layer. So this is what we're gonna create right now with the shape. We're gonna find this combed straight down. I'm gonna isolate this side just so slightly so you can see where we're working. Center of the back, we're gonna call it six o'clock. We're gonna call her nose 12 o'clock. We're gonna call her right ear three o'clock and her left ear nine. So we're gonna be referencing those body positions and those points of interest of where we're supposed to be standing in relationship to the sections as we're breaking through it. So first things first, my client's head is upright. I don't need her necessarily to lean forward at this point because I'm working above the occipital bone. Um, and in this case, I can just draft everything straight down using the fine teeth of my comb, holding my comb on the bridge. I'm aligning the fibers that the comb is creating in the hairs parallel to my profile section. So super straightforward, no elevation at all. I'm looking for a zero degree elevation. I'd love some more weight at the base of the haircut. So I'm gonna go right to the nape using the inside heel of my blade and then start to cut from the center profile all the way to the left side. Now on these mannequins specifically, I've got a lot of hair per square inch on the dense, in the density category on this left-hand side, right at the so, again at the rear recession. So I'm gonna be working that area a little bit more aggressively, but that's not to say that it needs to be worked aggressively on a regular person's head. 
More often than not, we have less hair per square inch around the perimeter of our hairline. So just pointing out probably what's obvious, but in case it's not. Once again, I'm standing at six o'clock. My knuckles and my fingers are square to my shoulders and working the heel of my blade, I'm navigating the length off. My stroke is about a quarter of an inch. So I'm serrating the edge ever so slightly to distribute weight from that line, but at the same time, collect a line that you can substantially see where it's gonna live on the back of the net. Let's take this to the second side. I'm just gonna make sure that I've got everything come through. I do, everything's looking good. If you've ever worked with me on education before, you know exactly what I'm about to do right now and what it's called is contact points. So what we are gonna do is take a small piece of hair from the right side, a small piece of hair from the left side, find the center of the body. We're gonna drop out the piece that we just cut and we're gonna etch out the second side. Let's just double check that, make sure we're on point. I think I'm looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see that from there. Let me see if I can give you a little bit more of a visible. But there it is, and that's my contact point. So now what I have to do is connect the dots between the center profile and the right-hand side, and I have continuity on both sides. I have symmetry on both sides. So here we go. Let's go and take care of it. I'm going to drop down. If you can see, I'm eye-to-eye -eye with my baseline. Hopefully my shoulder's out of the way. Eye-to-eye -eye with my baseline, kicking my fingers out, heel of the shear towards the destination, and in this case, it's the profile section. There we go. And we're just gonna take any little rogue hairs out of there. And let's go back and double check, see what that's looking like. It's looking good. So as you can see, we're starting to build our baseline. We've got the disconnection underneath there. We've got a square line. We're cutting square to the body. What that's doing is leaving additional length and weight on the sides of the neck here. So what we can start to see as we turn her over to the side here, is the development of length that's starting to build into an A-line concept. So that's what we're doing. We're not trying to create dog ears on her, but we are wanting to extend the length ever so slightly towards the chin. Let's drop that straight forward and down. Let's have her lean away from the side that we're working on. We're gonna take this straight over the ear. We know that the ear is a red flag area, so we're just gonna tap above and below, not using the blade, obviously, there. And using the heel of the blade, we're gonna to continue to build that angle towards the front of the head. Let's comb that back just ever so slightly. And I feel like we actually knocked it out of the park. That's pretty good. So feeling confident about my first line right now, let's get that little last hair out of there. We're gonna move this over towards the right-hand side. And we're gonna turn it right there. That might be a good angle for us. We're gonna have her lean up. And we're gonna drop this over. So once again, guys, uh, just checking in right now with our call. What we are doing is a textured bob. We have built an undercut underneath using graduation. About three, under, uh, three inches at the occipital bone to an inch at the nape. Everything was over-directed back slightly to the previous section, which just started to stack a little bit of A-line and graduation inner length to the nape of the neck itself on the sides of the back recession. From there, we're cutting an A-line, concave line, longer in the front, shorter in the back. We split the half, uh, back in half, and we cut the left side first. Using a point of reference on the left side at its furthest point, we grab the same point on the right side. We gather them together and created a contact point. From there, when we cut the right side, we just connect the dots. We're gonna do exactly the same thing at the front of the head right now. If you're following me, guys, give me a thumbs up, throw me some love, let's see where we're at. How are we doing out there? I, it's really hot in San Diego and I'm sweating my off right now. So I'd love to turn the AC on, my apologies for the wet face, but here we go. Hopefully you're digging it, I'm having fun right now. We are gonna take this first section or this first front area, first front area, that doesn't even make sense. We're gonna take the front area from the left side that we just cut. We're gonna grab a point of reference from that side, use it again on the right-hand side to create another contact point. Take that straight down. We just wanna make sure that we find the center of the face. Once that drops out of our finger, we're gonna to start to chisel through that edge right there. Let's just bring that back together. I've got a little bit more length there. Let's see if that gives us it. Yeah, I think we're good. So using that contact point, let's knock out that last side and then we're gonna be done with the baseline. 
And we're going to start building internal graduation in the hair pen. We're going to start building layers and convex layers up in the top. And then we're going to get into a little curtain fringe off the face here. It's seriously sick. So stay tuned with me, guys. we got some dope stuff coming up. After I finish this baseline right now, we are going to use time lapse. And i got a second mannequin that's got this area done already. I blue dry the area or blue dry the entire head of the other mannequin to get us to this point with dry hair. And we're going to start to build all the little layers with dry hair. We're gonna tap the area above the ear and below and just continue to connect the dots there, those two lines. So dropping that straight down, refining any loose edges in there. This one seems a little bit more rough than the other side, so I'm just gonna detail it just ever so slightly more. I'm gonna prune through that edge there. If you see, I just hold the blade in my hands and cut just a tiny little bit. Ends up becoming a little mustache too, which is fun. All right, peeps, so what we would do at this point is we would drop the back section here. We would knock out the layers that would fall at zero degrees exactly the same way that we did the previous sections. I would continue to stay, uh, build that baseline, splitting the back in half at the profile. On the left side, I stand at six o'clock, bang it out from the profile to that left side. On the right side, I'm gonna grab a contact point from the left, knock out my contact point, Refine the right side by connecting the dots. I'm going to drop my left front side down. I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did previous. We're still looking at cutting this at zero degrees. Once I finish that, we're going to use that as a contact point on the other side. Once I get that in there, we're done with the baseline. We're going to blow dry the hair, straighten it out. It's going to help me to have a little bit more of a straighter nature with the hair itself when I move into the layers. So moving from there right into this one, a little movie magic for you all right now. So we're going to throw that in there. I don't know why I just became a southern girl. I said that. But we're going to throw that in there right now. And I'm going to spin it around with a disc here. And you can see what we've created. We've got a slight pitch in the line. It's not radical, but we've got a concave line building around. I've loosely blue dried the hair. I use a YS Park brush, a big, huge fatty. I wasn't looking at trying to create a ton of anything in the hair, but just trying to straighten out the ends a little bit. What you can see underneath here is the shorter area. So we've got that in there. So this is basically stage two. We've built everything in the perimeter, in the baseline of the haircut, whatever you want to call it. And now we're going to start to work out everything else. We are going to take our razor and we're going to close our razor down and we're going to pick up our shears. These are my Mizutani's. Uh, they were a gift to me at one point in my career and uh, I've used them for the last, I think, three years now. I love them. Uh, they're great for point cutting. They're 5.2 inches for what that's worth. I use them for dry cutting and wet cutting. Um, it's a great shear. And if you have other great shears out there, let me know. I'd love to try them. <laughs> we are going to take this. We're going to stick the pin into a lock position. Let's find the head here again. And we're going to take the back and split the back from the front with a radial parting. And as I'm doing that, if you guys are just joining in right now, we have built the perimeter of our textured bob. My name is Travis Parker and I own the Travis Parker Academy. I'm also a global educator for L'Oreal Professionnel. We have a curriculum in the Travis Parker Academy called Hairdressing Made Easy. It's a three pillared curriculum that takes you through the basics to advanced cuts. And we're starting to put this out into a subscription based content that's gonna launch in July. We're launching online and live classes coming up I think I'm putting the dates out uh, actually this weekend if I can finish it up. But this weekend, we're putting the dates out. And each one of our two-day seminars that happen in person here are going to be spread out over two weeks. And we're going to steal you for about three hours a few nights a week and run you through hands-on experiences. We're going to send you the mannequins. Um, we have a whole media studio that we built out here that I'm filming and you can't see right now. But it allows me to see you and, and figure out where the dexterity of your hands are, where your body positioning is in relation to the lines and the sections. And it allows me to really connect with you in a way that I didn't even know was possible online before. So I'm super excited to be able to announce that right now. If you don't follow me on IG, I'm Travis Parker Hair. Please follow me. I've got great content on there and I'm really about you. I'm about the hairdresser. I've been a hairdresser for 34 years now. And in the 34 years that I've been a hairdresser, 20 of those I've been educating and teaching now. What I've learned is my time behind the chair has served an incredible role in me understanding who we are as hairdressers and what we need to think about when it comes to being a hairdresser behind the chair. That said, I've implemented all of that as the nature of what our uh, content really is and how we're supposed to actually respond and react to the client every single day. But my belief is if we can simplify the processes, 
we can really stand there with confidence and really love our clients and connect with them in a way that we can't if we're stressed over the hair part. So with that said, we are going to be working into the next section. So I'm going to come all the way back here again. I'm way on this side of the screen now. So what I'm taking is, is everything underneath the occipital bone. As you know, we've already built into graduation. That part's done. The baseline here, all of that part's done as well. So we're going to start stacking the hair using grad and deep point cutting from the occipital bone straight up through the top of the head. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, buffering this corner here. We're going to be beveling the edge is probably the proper way to say it. I've got a slight diagonal forward section here. Nothing major, major. With that section, I'm going to keep the mannequin facing right here so you can really see this profile section. So this is the dead center of the back of the head if for whatever reason it looks weird on your phone or computer or whatever else. This is where my hands are gonna live every single section I'm taking here after. So if my fingers are not perpendicular to the ground or aligned with the profile, I'm doing something wrong. At the same time, the top of this section is at the top of my chest now as well. So in alignment of how high or low to keep my client, my client's exactly where I need her to be. If you guys are jamming right now with me and you're totally vibing with this texture bob that we're about to build out and finish, Give me some thumbs up, give me some hearts, give me some love. Oh, I see that pouring in, that's legit. Hi, Anna Smith, I see Anna on there. Who is that, A-R-I-G, I, uh, I don't know who that is. But hi, oh my God, there's so much love coming in, I love it. All right, you guys, so what you're gonna see disappear is this little surface area here. Hands straight up to the ceiling, palm towards chest. I'm gonna take the hair straight out to find my 90. The surface of that section when it's parallel to the ground is a 90. Take that halfway between zero and 90. And now what I'm gonna be doing is point cutting through this edge here. You can't see my point cut, so I'm gonna turn it right there. Let's see if that's better. If we can't see it, we will move it again, peeps. But here we go, we're gonna find our 90, drop that down to 45, there we are. And we're gonna take one inch off this top surface of the section here. And that's it. And if you can see if anything, and I twist it just to the side here, and I wouldn't recommend it do that in real life, but for the film here, I'm just deep point cutting through the ends there. To be honest, that wasn't too deep, it was about an inch. So uh, with that said, I am going to take my next section. That section becomes my guide to length for everything on this left side now. I'm gonna use it as a guide to length to strut my right, and everything on the right side is gonna be uh, building off of that as well. So super important to get that, that right. If it's not right, the whole thing's gonna be asymmetrical, which, you know, maybe we could call art, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if you're trying to make it symmetrical, you know, using a couple of these practices will probably help you find continuity and predictability in your work, and yeah, again, less stress. So, here we go. Second section, occipital bone, 45, dropping that down. Let's find that previous, there we go. I'm gonna allow a little bit more hair to travel from my head at this point. I'm finding the way the hair is bending, and I'm cutting parallel to the hair fibers themselves. This is deep point cutting. It's also called parallel point cutting. When the shear, let's just pretend these teeth, I'll throw it that way. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, when the teeth are aligned with the comb and say these teeth where hair is coming out from the head, the straighter I go and that's parallel point cutting. As I start to position that at an angle, I'm starting to become closer towards notching or blunt cutting. So depending upon how the tip of the shear enters that section, you're either diffusing the weight from the hair or you're removing length and weight at the same time. So maybe something to think about um, yeah, and just how you position your shears. So for what it's worth, let's keep going. I'm gonna drop that down. Weight looks pretty good right there. Looks a little thick at the bottom here. So just diffusing the areas that need to be cut, not the areas that don't. If it doesn't need it, it doesn't need it. Let's see, I'm gonna take the radial section out. I'm gonna turn her a completely different direction now. I'm gonna turn her over this way. So you can start to see what's happening. And I'm gonna come stand on this side now. So just remember, my fingers are in the profile section here. Now, with that said, you will have a different angle. I'm gonna take a diagonal forward line. I'm not trying to be crazy about it. This is not my haircut that I'm trying to cut with a laser beam and make sure it's ideal, perfect, like beep, 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 beep. It's not that haircut. So don't stress, just follow the principles. If you can, screenshot my uh, image in the back right now so that you've got us uh, to use this as a guide. Finding my profile again, finding the 45 at the occipital bone, and I'm gonna keep cutting through the layers here. What this is going to develop is a graduation stack on top of the underneath, and it's gonna start to graduate into a longer length that leaves me one length at the front of the face. So just continuing 
So work through that. Here's my next section, another diagonal forward. Bringing this straight back. When you bring it back, drape it back. Don't go teed apart. So here's my part line. We're not dragging it straight like this. It's gonna cut it shorter than you want to. It's gonna shrink up and it's gonna, de it's gonna defeat where the, the uh, weight needs to live in the haircut all in all. Here we go. Right back to what we were doing. Now let's allow this to be much deeper. I'm gonna get my comb out of the way. If you like point cutting, give me some love. Here we go, fingers are perpendicular again, aligned with my profile section. And just diffusing all of this weight through here, just airing all that stuff out. If you can see through that line, give me some more love. There we go. This possibly could be, no, this is gonna be our second to last section. So another diagonal forward. That looked like that's at the top apex to the mid recession, which is what we're gonna be using for our bangs in a minute here. So we're gonna come back in here, diffusing that weight, fingers are parallel again. What doesn't reach my elevation here, doesn't get cut. Let me back up. What doesn't get cut, isn't supposed to get cut. Just, that's the way it works out right now. So I'm in the center of the back, standing at six o'clock. My fingers are parallel with the profile section. Everything is dragging to that section. If it doesn't meet where I'm at in the section, it doesn't get cut. And my friends, that is totally cool. That's exactly where we're at. So let's start to see what happened here. So if you can tell, we've got the layers that are starting to stack up on top now. And now when we start to move this around, we've got some more texture that can happen in there. We've got that, that body that's going to respond, that buoyancy in the curl that's going to move a little bit more and shrink up a little bit more. And yeah, just give us a little bit more signature and character. So Let's continue to knock out the right side. It's, it's pretty fast if I move at a decent speed. So I'm gonna bring her around this way again. <laughs> I hope that didn't make you dizzy. Uh, I'm gonna bring her around this way again. And we're gonna start on this right-hand side. I'm gonna take a diagonal forward section again. That's a little bit high compared to the other one. So let's revisit that again. Let me find my profile. From the profile, let's take that diagonal forward just like we did before. And we're going to start off with less is more. Let me try to figure out where I'm at first before I start digging into a bunch of hair. I have done that far too many times and I'm not about to do it on camera in front of you guys. So let's just be safe. Let's find our 90. Let's drop that down to a 45. We're going to point cut through that. Fingers are towards the ground now. Palm is towards ceiling. If this starts to get too awkward for me, which I believe that it's going to, I'm gonna lower her down. I'm just gonna be proactive because I'm pretty sure that's what's about to happen. So now I'm on this right-hand side. I'm working internally in my graduation. Uh, this is in essence kind of a double A line concept. We do have an undercut in it. We are deep point cutting and parallel point cutting at the same time. We're building our texture bob right now. This is our third, well, our third major thing that we're thinking about. We built the undercut first, we built the baseline second, and now we're building the first bit of graduation into it. And then we're gonna get into some convex layers and a curtain fringe. So. Uh, if you're just joining in, that's where we're at. If you're staying with me right now, give me some love. Give me some hearts. Give me some, give me something. Oh, there it is. I like it. I want a beautician girlfriend. <laughs> Whoever said that? That's funny. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I can't help you out. I can't be a beautician girlfriend. Um, yeah, that's probably not in my wheelhouse. Uh, but needless to say, I'm going to continue working forward. I do believe I have a clip up here separating the front of the hair from the radial. I am taking it from the high point of the head. This was the intersection of my profile section and my radial. So now I'm really starting to get close to moving to the front of the head. I'm going to turn her just a little bit more profile here so you can see it from a side angle as well. And hopefully see the point cutting. That's a really fun thing to see, I think. Um, and I, I would say the major red... Not red flag, but the major thing that we want to think about with point cutting is allowing hair to travel from our fingers. We typically pull hair out and we cut it really, really closely like this. And what we need to do is really allow that hair to transfer past our fingertips so we can allow the shear to travel through those sections, really, again, displacing weight. So here we go. Let's drop back down. There's my occipital bone. I'm finding my 45. Fingers are straight up and down. As you can see, I'm using my ring finger right now to stabilize my shear. Parallel point cutting all the way through. 
and I'm not trying to lose weight right now, or not trying to lose length through it. I'm just trying to distribute weight from it right now. I'm gonna come back in here, I'm gonna reverse it. I can, I've got a light on the ground down here that you can't see, but I can. And when I held the hair out, I could see right through it. Which, if you can, find a light source to look through your sections to see what's thick versus what's thin, and thin out the areas that are thick. Solidify the areas that are thin. But yeah, use your environment contextually to help you get through the process. So. I just have to make sure that I'm not overdirecting anything back. You know, I still feel like it's heavy on the surface of the section here. So I'm going to come in just a little bit deeper. There we go. All right, feeling better about it. I would like to move forward into my next section here. I know we've got a couple repeats on this. So if you're with me, give me some thumbs up, some hearts. Give me some love. If you've ever been with me in education, give me a thumbs up as well. I'm always curious to see where your training has come from. So if you wouldn't mind in the chat box there, give me, a, give me some of your educational backgrounds. Where have we been in our careers? Who have we studied under? Who was your mentor? Who teaches you how to be you, boo? Love that. All right, so it's just making sure my left and my right side were balanced out there. What do we got coming in here? Oh, I just got to wish I was in front of you. Um, that's sweet. Whoever that is, I wish you were too. We just had a four day class in person in this place. Uh, everybody just left yesterday. We started everything on Sunday. We taught them our first pillar of our course, which is called Cutting Course One. And that was the first three, uh, two days. That's six haircuts. It's all about building shapes. And then we got into our second two days, or yeah, second two days, our third day and our fourth day, which is our second pillar called Cutting Course Two. And uh, there we go. So we can start to see those layers busting out of there. So. Once again, I'm just going to move the hair around so you can see where we're living. We have that additional length in the front there. We've got that baseline moving that direction. And this takes us into our convex layer. So I'm going to throw this back here to the screen again. And now where we're at is in this middle slide here on the, on the television. So I'm looking at what this is. And what I'm starting to see is I, I've got a green line at the occipital bone. I've got one right in between it and one that's higher up. The one that's higher up, what I'm starting to see is all these lines are parallel. What I'm also starting to see is this line in the center is 90 degrees from the center of that section. What it's telling me is going to happen is I'm going to end up with convex layers in the back of the head. That is a layering pattern where the top of it is going to have a point and it cuts through the, the, uh, the apex or the curvature of that section. So whether that's on the top and it cuts through the parietal ridge or that's in the back and you're working on the convex area of the head, that's what we're dealing with right now. All right, guys, if you're just tuning in, my name is Travis Parker, and I am owner of the Travis Parker Academy. I'm a global educational director with L'Oreal Professionnel. I've been with those guys for 15 years now. We've had a long, awesome road together. Um, all of my curriculum is my curriculum, and uh, I am happy to share it with you guys. We have an online program coming out um, real soon. We're going live in just a couple weeks. Right now, we're gonna release the dates, hopefully this weekend. Um, we have subscription content that's coming out. We've got a YouTube channel that we're building right now. And we just built a whole media studio inside the space here so we can do exactly this. Share with you, learn how to be better hairdressers, and do cool work. So if you're with me, give me some love, man. If you haven't met me before, join me on Travis Parker Hair at Travis Parker Hair on Instagram. And that's where we can connect even more so. DM me, reach out to me. I am here for you, my friends. We are taking our convex layers at this point across the top of the head. I'm not real specific on what I'm doing in regards to what I'm explaining to you. So let me back up just a little bit and tell you what's happening. Every section I'm taking is on base right now. I'm taking it from the round of its own section. You can take the bridge of your comb and rock it back and forth. And what you can find is at the center of that curvature is where you're going 90 from. At the same time, I'm not trying to cut layers or hair short here. What I'm looking at doing is just diffusing more weight from it. And that's gonna give me some cool flat layers up in here that's just a little bit more rocker, just that, that good sort of injection of 70s in it. And it's just taking the double A line and just giving it a little bit of a twist that I think is way cooler right now. Um, last section behind the back of the radio. We're gonna take that guy up and that is a terrible angle. So let me take her. Yeah, that's probably really good. Is that good for you guys right now? Give me, give me a thumbs up or some love if that's a good angle. All right, cool, thank you. All right, so let's take this straight up from here. Now I'm gonna take my comb in this section, drop out the bottom, rock this section back and forth. 
From the center of that section, I'm going to take this hair straight up. I'm going to cut through that point. Everything so far from the profile to the back side of the left side of the radial, back side of the left side to the left, yeah, on the left side to the back of the radial has stayed on base. Now everything from there forward, from the front of the radial, separating what hangs in front of the shoulders as uh, to so what hangs behind the shoulders is going to be over-directed back. Let's just lock that in a little bit more. Then I'm going to take this, so all of this is coming backwards here, and we're going to move this one more time. I need you to see the over-direction. It's crucial, crucial, crucial that we see what's happening here. So let's take that. Here's my radial. Elevating that straight up. Even though we are loosely point cutting, we still are taut with tension. We still have the over direction in place and we are still carrying this back to the radial. You saw what I took off. There was basically a little corner that's in there. That's the weight developing from the double A line that we had created or the internal A line. Let's take this next section further back. Exactly the same thing. I'll show you again. There's that corner that I was talking about. So that's what I'm taking out. You can see I'm releasing all my tension right now, which I know is a bad thing to do, but it's more important that you guys see the technique. So in essence, that's coming back to the radio. It's taut. Uh, last section here, I'm grabbing something off the profile. So bringing this all the way back now. Wow, look at that. So you know what that is? That is the corner right in through here. So if you want to leave that corner right there in the front, so you've got that strong whip further into the face, leave it. If you care, if you don't care if that, that little whip, instead of it being maybe right at the corner of the lips, it's a little bit further back, go ahead and cut it out. And then you have more of this distribution and layering up towards the front. We're also going to be building that curtain fringe, remember, and I'm going to need to displace um, quite a bit of weight in here anyways. And the way this mannequin is sewn, she's super thick around the face. So uh, I'm saying do what you need to do, but read the surface of the hair, read the density, and think about what the end result is going to be because there is cause and effect at this point right now. Well, it's cause and effect to everything we've done. But yeah, this is a big one. This is what's going to live on her face. So pretty big deal. I'm going to take it off. And now what you'll start to see, if I bring her straight, I'm gonna show you what the layering is that we're starting to build her. So if I bring her straight, I'm gonna take this, come straight up. See how this part in the middle is much longer than the side? What that's doing is giving me convex layers. It's giving me more movement in through here. And then when I sort of wet this back down again and I get some natural texture and body back in it again, it did, I'm telling you right now, it's so dope. It's such an extra added ingredient that might be easily missed, but you know, it's another step that really, I think again, puts your signature to it and makes it relevant. And whenever you're looking at work on IG or anywhere else, and you're trying to figure out why your work doesn't look identical to it, you know, it might be these little steps that we don't necessarily throw into every reel that we create or every, uh, you know, short video that we do. So needless to say, you know, you could have been done with a haircut with the undercut. You could have been done with a haircut in the baseline. We could have been done with a haircut with the internal grad. We could have been done with a haircut right now with this convex layers, but we're going to move into some fringe in just a second. And I'm looking at my clock over here. I got 138. So you guys have been hanging out with me for about 38 minutes right now. And I just want to say thank you so much. Once again, we are doing a textured bob. And this is an IG takeover of Instagram right now or of a hairbrain, forgive me. And uh, Troy reached out to me not too long ago and asked me if I wanted to do it. And I've been hanging out with Gordon so much on Clubhouse, I, I sort of forget about IG sometimes. And, but it just feels so good to be back, you guys. So, uh, Hairbrain, thank you for having me back here on live again, letting me do a takeover again. Really appreciate you guys. Really appreciate what you do for the industry of sharing artists like me to everybody in the world. And if you guys got love for Hairbrain, drop it right now because they have done it for me. And if anything, what Hairbrain, the way I think about it, is Hairbrain is a company of like-minded people. And you know, for me, I'm always looking for my tribe. I'm always looking for where I can belong. I'm always looking for people that speak the same language. And again, this is by no means a, a plug for Hairbrain. But yeah, man, good people are good people. And when you have a company of good people, that's culture. And that's a tribe that this guy wants to be part of. And if anything, it just makes me feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself. And, and I love that. So... You know, share with everybody, you guys. Be like Hairbrain. You know, spread the word of other artists. It's not just about you. And, and it's about those that inspire you. It's about those that ignite you. It's about those that help you design who you are as an artist. 
And it's not a shame to be referencing people. Uh, you're not copying anybody. You know, my, my, my good buddy Heath Grout said it best. If you take from one, you're a thief. But if you take from everyone, but put it together in your way, you're a genius. And the reality is, is that we're all passionate people. We're taken from all places. We're taking it from everybody. And that's what makes us us, man. It's, it's you know, it's what you do. Um, a small little story. This is cute. My uh, client, Sandy, gave me... Uh, stopped here in the middle of a class yesterday and dropped off the t-shirt and I couldn't figure out why she did and the reality was that when she was sitting in my chair I looked over at the side of my wall and I saw this really cool effect from shadows coming through my window and it was a super graphical effect matter of fact it reminded me of the Joy Division album and if you know who Joy Division is give me some love right now but it reminded me of the Joy Division album where um you know, yeah, it reminded me of the big Joy Division album. And then yesterday she brought me a t-shirt of it. And I just couldn't believe how cool it was. And, you know, yet, so here was my passion and inspiration sort of driving from this little thing. It sort of inspired me. And I was talking to her about it. And, uh, and then she brought me a t-shirt. And, and I'm saying that if you are ignited by passion, share it with other people. People want to be around people that are good peeps, man. People want to be around people that are ignited in their art form and in their passion. And here was Sandy, she didn't even bring me a shirt, she brought me a shirt. And uh, yeah, I was just looking into nature for inspiration. So yeah, for, for what it's worth, my silly little story to you guys, but yeah, just a reminder for me to, to always be inspired and look at everything. I'm not just looking at hair, I'm looking at everything for inspiration. And again, if you're an artist, I know that art doesn't file under one category called hair. So it's, it's really combining everything. You guys, I am finishing up my convex layers right now. Let's just come up both sides as I pound her head. Let's just come up both sides here, see how symmetrical we are or are not. Yeah, that looks good. Let's just refine that little tip right there. So you can see the little point I've got in there. This is all of my concave layers. I'm gonna flatten that out just a little bit there and just round the corner because I don't want that to fall into a shelf or a little line. That will be the surface layer. So coming back in and just a part two to that one, I want that point in there. And that graduation in there, just not to be literally like a dagger at the top. Um, all right, peeps, so now let's spin her all the way around. We've got some serious business going on in our haircut here. You guys have been watching it live. We're building our textured cut. Clearly what you can't see is everything around the face here. We haven't finished our curtain fringe yet and the framing on the face. It looks like I've got three minutes over here. Gerard, if you're still on, I know you told me I could go a little bit longer if that was the case. If you guys want to stick around and see this curtain fringe right now, I want you to give me some love because if I'm going to push this thing and get in trouble for hanging out with you for a little bit longer to show you one more technique, I want to see that you want it. So give me some love right now, everybody. I'd love to see who's still in the house. Thank you so much for being here. There it comes right there. Oh, I love hair brain. All right, guys. So let's find our face here. There she is. So what we're going to start off with first is we're going to start off with a triangular section right around her face. We're going to make that triangular section at the second bend of the top of the head. So the second apex. If I was to take my comb and start to rock the comb back and forth, that's how deep I'm going in. In this case, it's about, I don't know, probably a little bit more than an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. Uh, no, it's not. It's probably about two inches. I'm lying to you. It's about two inches. So there we are. That is also dictated upon how thick and how focused you want your fringe. So if you want a heavy curtain fringe here, you're going to go deeper back in. If you want to close the person's face in, you're going to keep that section really, really narrow. So left and right, you know, from profile, the more narrow it is, the more you have hair that drops over the cheekbones, which makes the face look more narrow. Now, if just the opposite, you want to open the face up, we know what to do. We're going to take that triangular section to mid-recession, maybe even to low recession. I don't really know. Uh, but needless to say, this is where we're at right now. I'm just out framing that because I want you to be able to personalize it, not just take it in a literal sense. So here we go. I'm going to clip this little gal out of the way so we can see more easily. Now, I'm going to drop her down a little bit lower. What I'm looking to do is put the center of my chest right at the top of her head here. I'm going to take this section. I'm going to comb it over to the side here. From the side here, I'm going to lay it on top of the cheekbone. Where I want the shortest piece to be is where I'm going to start to cut the hair. So I'm going to take my fingers right against the side of her head here. I'm going to take my fingertips, anchor them into her cheekbone here, flip the hair out. I'm going to hook the hair with my, uh, the inside of my blade towards the pivot of the blade itself. 
And I'm gonna to start to close the blade in rocking motions as I take a step backwards and take another step backwards. And what I'm starting to do is I'm internal channel cutting and whipping the hair so that without really much effort at all, I'm starting to create shorter pushing longer that pushes the hair and whips it back off the face. So just a super rad way if somebody doesn't want to you know, curl in there in their hair or set their hair every single day, uh, a dope way to get a good fringe in there. Uh, but it does create a little bit of motion in your body. You've got to move. And so it's not just about sort of hanging out and chilling for a minute. You got to sort of walk with it. So here it is on the other side, guys. I'm going to take just a smidge from the previous side. Now my knuckles are going to anchor into her chest here. And from there, I'm going to start to actually get my stance and start to work that all the way back. Let's see, is there a question coming in? Oh, request to join me live. I don't know if I'm allowed to bring anybody in live, so I'm just going to ignore that. But thank you for coming in and wanting to jump in. Uh, same thing, I'm twisting the hands and then just rocking it back. So now I've got a little bit of build in there. I'm clearly shorter on this other side here. Let's create a contact point just so we know where we're at. I'm gonna rough cut that edge off. All right, there we go. Perfect. So I'm just gonna work out that edge just a little bit more, coming it straight over the face again. Again, knuckles into the uh, side of the cheekbone, kick my fingers out, hook into the hair, and then I'm just gonna rock through it as I walk myself backwards. Now I can tell there's gonna be a little too much weight in it still. So what I'm gonna do is a little crisscross applesauce. I'm gonna take this top section here, I'm gonna comb it teed apart. So here's that diagonal back line that I took. I'm gonna comb that straight across the head and using a flat layering technique, which puts the surface of this parallel to the ground, I'm gonna take that little whip out right there. And what that's gonna do is make that part shorter. So when this kicks off of her face, I don't have the conflict of this piece here now pushing it back down. Just saying. So now when this comes across again, all of that stuff, again, is just gonna be that much more sustainable. Actually, I'll stay over here and knock out this side real fast. We're getting real close to the end, guys. I got 147 here. I'm two minutes past my time, but I'm gonna keep rocking it out. So if you're with me, just hang with me. We are nearing the completion of the haircut. Oh, that looks so dope. Yeah, I love when it goes live and it works out. That is always a good thing. Now what I'm gonna do is from the top apex of the head, this is my last step in the cut unless I wanted to get back and dry detail a little bit. Last bit of the cut from the top apex. We're gonna take that to the high recession on both sides so I can have just even a little bit more hair on the face. There that is. I'm going to subsection that out of the way and take this next section over here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is exactly what I did in the second step of the last process. So not the first one, but just the second one. So here we go, I'm gonna take that back down the middle again. Oh, I do wanna reference real quick. That last drawing up there is my bang. That is not the way I'm cutting the bang right now. That is an offset profile part, a side part. Uh, I didn't realize it until this morning actually when I got here. And, but yeah, I'm doing it down the center. But again, screenshot the picture right now because if you wanna do it with a side part, that's how you do it. All right, here we go. What I'm looking to find is that area underneath there. There it is. Now what I'm gonna do is internal channel cut, uh, directional channel cut, I should say. And I'm gonna be taking this now back towards me. So sort of spoon feeding it with a flat layering technique, but spoon feeding it back towards me and carving it from where that guide was underneath through the ends here. Once again. There's my guide there. That's where I start to directionally channel cut. From there through there. All right, that's starting to look really cute. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side and then I think we might be wrapping it up. So let's see what happens. Once again, guys, if you're just tuning in, you're at the back end of the haircut right now and you're watching our curtain fringe happen. We are cutting the fringe from a textured area down below or a guide to length that's down below through the surface area here to get a stronger whip around the face. Let's take our clips out. Let's remove the head of our mannequin, not a real person, and we're gonna shake it out, get all crazy here. All right, so let's see what we got here. How's that looking for you guys? I haven't really been able to see it yet, so I'm hoping that it looks good. I see some hearts coming up, so that's a good sign. Um, but let's see where we're at. Okay, there we go. That's really cute. 
I'm gonna bust out some texture spray, peeps, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of texture spray in her hair. I actually would put a lot more product in her hair than just this, but I'm gonna work this so I can get a soft end result right now, and then I'm gonna show you the pre-done that I did uh, earlier this morning. I'm gonna ask her to lean forward just a little bit. I'm gonna wipe out this center part somewhat here. I'm gonna push the hair as I'm pushing the product into it. I am not shy with this type of a product. I am trying to build porosity in her hair. I also conditioned her hair before I cut it so that I wasn't fumbling through tangles in front of you guys. So it's squeaky clean right now. So I am throwing a bit of additional product in it. All right, peeps, so I'm just working my little magic here. Let's get my shoulder out of the way. What do you think? Pretty cute, right? Let's get a little bit of mischief up in here, a bit of mischief up in there. Loving all the little finger pressing right now. I basically take the hair between my fingertips, uh, my index finger, my thumb, and I just sort of smash the hair a bit. Uh, I will also take the hair and rouge it as well. So I'm sort of smashing it and pulling the other ends at the same time which just gives me a little bit more bed head up in there. And I think that's cute too. So um, yeah, it's really a matter of just throwing in your vibe and your style now. I could probably do a couple little shorter pieces in through the fringe, but here's the other pre-done that we had. So we've got our two mannequins here. Let's turn her around. Let's see if we can do this at the same time. So there's our two cuts. The back, there's the undercut underneath there. Just fun. There it is. We gotta feel like banner light right now. Um, but there's our twins. Look at those cutie pies. I want to hang out with these chicks. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Travis Parker and I had a blast with you guys today. Please friend me on Instagram. It's Travis Parker hair. We also run an academy called Travis Parker Academy hairdressing made easy. We have filmed and we are editing right now all of our subscription content. And we have three different formats of the way that you're going to be able to subscribe to it. And it is hands-on, so super exciting. You can take it as demo only if you want to as well. But we are doing it for hands-on as well. We also have limited amounts of people that can take it hands-on. So we can handle the bandwidth of it. We are taking our cl uh, classes online live as well with webinars. And we are launching the dates this weekend. And if not, early next week. So I'm super hyped that we're taking each one of our two-day courses, six days all together, and building each one of those programs into a two-week program, three to four hours each night. Uh, you get to chill out with me and my buddy Jeremy Taylor that does fantastic hair with the Academy here. We really appreciate you guys tuning in today. Hairbrain, thank you so much for giving me the mic. Thank you so much for letting me take over your live. I hope you guys learned a lot of great new techniques. I will get to see you next time. Stay tuned. Join me on Clubhouse and Instagram peeps. Let's stay in touch. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye.